Stratasys gave me some information on how to check through the connectors on the machine, on the PC boards, to check the voltages along the way and see if we're getting voltage to the proper places in order to be able to boot up the machine. So let me show you kind of what that looks like, what I'm going to do here. Welcome to 3D Accuracy, where I'll talk about 3D printing, 3D product design, and 3D injection and die-cast mold design. What we're up to is I want to go in on these PC boards and I want to check the voltages across certain connections. You'll see I have this one connector here, this one right in the center of the screen. I have that one unplugged. And that's the first one I want to start with to see if we're getting electricity to pin 20 on that connector down there. And that's pin 20 is the upper left hand corner is pin 20. So what we're basically doing is checking the 24 and the 48 volt systems to make sure this little transformer is working correctly. Okay, we're going to see if we've got the right electricity going to the right parts that will allow the switch to turn on the electricity for the rest of the machine and boot up the computer, which is right over here, and all the other components. So we're going to check connectors from one to the next to the next, follow the system, and see that we're getting voltage. And if not, then that'll tell us, give us an indication of what component may be problematic and needs to be replaced. Okay, so this is going to be a long, sort of tedious thing to do because I have to have the machine off, like it is now, go in there, unplug the connector I want to measure, then go back, turn on the three-phase, flip the circuit breaker to provide electricity to the machine, then trip that circuit breaker down there to provide electricity to the system, do the test and see if I have voltage to that point. If I do, then I have to shut this down, shut down the circuit breaker on the three-phase panel, and then shut down the three-phase panel and plug that connector back in, move on to the next one. I don't want to be disconnecting connectors while there's electricity in the system because that could cause some problems with components on the PC boards and we want to avoid that. So all I'm doing is interrupting the power supply by doing it this way and the electricity will only go that far and no farther and we can check it at each step along the way. So it's going to be a tedious process. I'm not going to video this whole thing all the way through. I'll just let you know when I hit a problem and discover something that might be wrong or if I've gone through all the steps and everything is okay. All right, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to see if we find out whether this is good. And then this battery is another issue. And so, but we'll address that later on. Using the miracle of editing, I decided to jump into the future to better explain how all this was done. While I was testing the electrical connectors in the Fortis 400MC, I soon realized that it wasn't an easy task. I had to shut down the printer in order to turn the electricity off, plug in and unplug connectors in order to check the voltages. And some of them, I couldn't unplug them to check the voltages because the voltages were coming from the other connector, the other side. So, I had to come up with a better way to do this, and this is what I came up with. With the miracle of editing, now that I've stepped into the future, I no longer have the Fortis 400 MC opened up and disassembled to show you what I did. So, we're going to use a substitute. I have this computer that's out of the Connex 500, and here's a connector. Ah, this is exactly what we've been testing in the Fortis 400 MC. Now, the problem is, how do I get the probe from the voltage meter into the connections? It won't fit. There's no way I can get in there and do this, unless I unplug them and expose the connectors on the inside. 
The problem being is sometimes the voltage I needed to check was coming from the other side and it wasn't convenient, it wasn't, wasn't going to work. So what I needed to do is get to the voltage and then take the other side, the other probe, and just check it to ground, just touch it to ground, and that would tell me whether the voltage was there or not. Now, in the Fortis 400 MC, I'm only working with 24 volts and 48 volts. So this will work for 24, 48 volts DC. I don't think I'd recommend doing this type of thing that I'm going to show you. On a higher voltage system, it probably wouldn't work. So what, I, what happened is I started scratching my head and I thought, how am I gonna check these voltages? Because I had like 20 connectors or 15 connectors or something to check. So all of a sudden it dawned on me, ah, I know. So I went back to some of my old parts that I've worked on years ago, parts I've designed, either the products or the injection molds or both, and I started digging around and thought, I'm gonna use a syringe. Now, how is a syringe gonna work? Okay, in there I've got all sorts of things, blood collection devices, gang ports, IV connectors, and lo and behold, some old syringes. So, what I decided to do is remove the cannula at the tip. Okay, I took the cannula out of the syringe, and then what I did is I came in here, and in the connector that I wanted to check the voltage on, I slid the cannula which is very, very small. Some of them are very small. The ones used for diabetes, insulin injections, and stuff like that are very, very small, most of them. And so I slid the tip of the cannula down into the connector so that it made contact with the metal, the metal part of the connector down in there. You see how that's in there? Now, it was very easy to touch the connector to the metal on the cannula and then put the other end onto the ground someplace to check the voltages. And that is how I made quick and efficient the checking of all the connectors because I no longer had to turn the power off and you know boot everything up, shut it down, move on to the next one. It, I just went from one to the next to the next to the next in the line in the process and it worked very very well. Now most people are probably not going to have the syringes <laughs> and cannulas lying around. The other thing you could probably use would be something like a sewing needle. Now with a sewing needle, you may want to take some electrical tape and tape it around one end so you've got some kind of a insulation between the metal part of the pin or of the sewing needle and your fingers. You know, this happens to have an injection molded lure lock connector at the other end so it's already insulated so I didn't have to mess with that. Just stick them down in there and go. But if you use something else, you probably want to insulate it in some fashion. So that's my quick little tip on how to check the connectors for something like this. If you're ever doing a voltage check on PC boards, that sort of thing. Now, there's also a lot of other fancy devices. There's dip clips, and chip connectors, and all those things that connect to the components on the on PC boards and computers and I designed a lot of the injection molds that made all those little dip, dip clips and mini pincers and all that stuff years ago I designed all the tooling that manufactured all those parts so I don't know if those are still around I know the electronics have changed you know everything evolves it gets different I don't know if those are still uh, something you can get a hold of, but in electronic stores that sell those type of things, you can check. There's probably little things, connectors you can get. Uh, I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are. But I don't do that sort of thing for a living, you know. So <laughs> I don't have all these cool tools that all you guys that do this stuff for a living have. So <laughs> I'm sure you have some tips and 
hints on how to do this as well. So anyway, okay, so that's it for, for now. Uh, let's jump back into the past. Which way are we going? Uh, back to the future? How did that go? I remember that series when that movie, all those movies came out years ago. How did that work? Uh, must have been editing. Had to be. <laughs> okay, let's go back and finish up the video. I'm finished checking all the connectors, all of these guys, that are in the safety system when the machine boots up. And all the connections are fine. The voltages are fine across everything that can be checked. So that's good. It eliminates some potential things. But we still don't know, you know, where the problem lies. Now, there, the two next items that are going to be in focus is this power supply here. I got to look at this and see how to check that, check the voltages on that guy. And then of course I need to replace this battery, get a new battery in the system because the battery is what will tell the machine, tell the computer here, that is right there, it'll tell the computer that it's safe to go ahead and boot up and turn everything on. So this is not functioning properly at this point. And I can bypass it, you know, with the cables in the back, but don't want to do that again. We did that before, and that's where we had the problem, had some problems. So not going to go in that direction. I'd rather replace the battery first and start there. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you're ever in need of 3D product design, 3D injection mold design, 3D die cast mold design, or 3D printed prototypes or production parts, please feel free to contact me. You can find contact information in the video description. I look forward to hearing from you and to being of service to you. Thank you for watching. As always, I appreciate it. See you on 3D Accuracy's next video.